Hello and welcome. Today's video is part two of my new chicken coop build series. Check out my Patreon, link is in the description. So today I'm going to be putting um, mortar in the joints. In the joints. Because um, I want to get it more stable before I start stacking any more bricks on top. Just because they're kind of thin, they're a little wobbly. Um, until they dry so that's why we only did two stacks in the last video and we didn't do a third um but they seem to have hardened rather stable not not as stable as like a traditional cinder block would but they're they're stable enough and i'm putting the mortar between the joints so that should help it be more stable obviously because the old coop is in the way i can't do the back side of the joints but we will do those once we get the old chicken coop out of the way. The reason why I'm building the new chicken coop around the old chicken coop is because the chickens still need to live somewhere while I'm building this chicken coop and the chicken coop kind of needs to connect up to the run in the same spot. So this is the mortar. I'm using it's just a th three sand to one um, concrete. The concrete I'm u well, the cement I'm using is just Lafarge plastic cement, so nothing really special, and it's just regular old sand from the sand pit around the corner. And I've made it a little runny because I want it to get between the joints, and I want to put it on smoothly because we are going to be putting a um, uh, render, I guess you'd call it, over this so that I don't have to see red bricks with cement joints forever in a day. Um, also putting a render over these bricks will help stable the wall. So I'm now going to put some mortar on. So I got the entire back done. I got this side done too. And I got four more blocks laid. And here's a little tip for those of you who decide to use these blocks. Make sure that the one with the, this one with the more uh, rigid is on the bottom and this one is pointing up because this one gives you more surface area to um, keep these blocks stable while you're laying them where if, if you have them upside down like these they're going to wobble a lot more when you're putting them up than if you put them the right way up like these but this is the better way to put them so I think it's looking pretty good Put another layer of bricks on. And as you can see, it's a rather straight row this time. So the next row is going to be a bit interesting because it's going to have a window in the back here and on the other side. Um, 
So I'll show that in a bit. And actually the next row will be the last row I can do before I will have to cut all the overhangs on the roof off. And I'll cut the, the overhang off the back too because when we go to build the front, what I think we're going to do is, is um, just slide the coop back to about here and then there'll be enough room in the front to build the front because the front has to go up outside of the run. But anyway, now I'm just taking a few bits off the side of the coop to put the next row on. Not really sure why this is here. I think I had, I used it to hang stuff. Update on these Bosch um, impact bits. They're holding up really well. Um, I've used the same bits. Not They're not in here, but in my other row of Torx bits, I've used the same bit bits to drive thousands of screws. Hold on. So, they're really good bits if you ask me. This is, these are square drive screws imported from Canada because they pretty much don't exist in this country. Must be screwed on from the other side. So I have four rows in the back. The brick missing in the middle there is for the rear window. And I have three rows on the side. And then a week ago, I didn't film it, but a week ago, I disconnected the chicken coop from the run and had my dad help me shove it back. So the chicken coop used to sit. This was right up against the beam. Then I built the door frame just out of standard 40 by 60s. Um, so two, one on either side, top. I'll have to put a piece of wood up here because Obviously this is not moving and then the door is going to be wider than the old door and then I just cemented it onto the concrete post at the bottom, drilled holes and put cement and rebar into the holes in the concrete post and then these are just temporary and then I've cemented my bricks directly. I got the first row on the front on and I've cemented them directly to this wood post. Probably not supposed to do that but it will it'll work for a chicken coop. And then I found that if I use corner clamps on the corner of the bricks they, um, they are more stable when they're still wet than, and it keeps it square so Definitely useful to put corner clamps on there. Safety first.
this is the first time I've ever laid bricks so I don't know a lot about it but I have found a few things that might be helpful now I'm using just standard concrete it's a three to one mix three parts stand three parts sand one part Lafarge classic so um, not concrete mortar and I don't think it's the right stuff for gluing these things together but it's what we have and it sticks really well so the one one thing I noticed was that these bricks suck all the water out of the concrete so it dries in five seconds after you put it on I'm just spraying a, a bit of water onto the bricks where you want to put the concrete gives you a little more time to um, maneuver the bricks before they um, dry it probably gives you a better bond another thing is just kind of arranging your cement or not cement your mortar in a nice level line allows you to get the brick more level when you pop it on. And one of the biggest things that I noticed right away was the this side, the one with the two notches, goes up. This side, the one with the three notches, goes down. The other way around is a lot harder to work with. Now one thing is, make sure you have a proper rubber mallet or dead blow hammer. Don't use this type of hammer because it will crack the bricks, but for some reason I don't have one of those in my toolkit yet. I'm just using a standard hammer. Then you just check if it's level. Both ways, of course. And then you also want to make sure that you're lining up somewhat okay with the rest of your bricks. And then also I've been going along and putting the cement in the joints on the front just because it's giving it a bit better sticking factor. And of course these bricks will be parged over um, anyway. You'll see that once I get these walls built. The walls are finished, five bricks high. I put my window frame in. Now, it wasn't that good of an idea to just cement the wood to the bricks, but that was the best I could come up with. But if you are gonna be cementing wood to bricks, along, along the top of the wood or side where you're gonna be cementing to, Make sure you drill holes or route grooves so that the cement has something to stick to because I didn't do that down here and it was a bit tricky to get it to stick. So, that's it for the walls. Obviously I'm going to be parging them with this stuff just for extra strength and so that it looks, looks better than it does. And then, got it all cemented to the door frame, but I'm actually gonna grind this off and put a piece of wood here to just provide better stability because this cement keeps on cracking. Um, so in the next video, I'll show you the roof how I'm going to stick it to the top of the bricks and also how I'm going to reinforce this door frame and I did buy a new cordless platform 
As anybody who's been watching my channel probably knows, I've been using DeWalt's for since forever, actually. But I've decided to buy a second platform just because there were a few things that I needed that DeWalt doesn't have the exactly what I want. So have a guess down in the comments as to which cordless platform I went into and in the next video you will see me using that platform and I'll show you which one it is. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.